Hey guys, Coach Kuiper here with another installment of Kuiper's Coaching Concepts. Uh, today we're continuing on with the concept of controlling the run game. Going to move on to controlling the run game at second base. Going to go through some of the mechanics and footworks, <clears throat> footwork uh, of each of the individual picks. Maybe break down a little bit about the three. And I'm going to break it into what I think are some of the easiest ways to describe it. Let's just call it uh, the daylight pick, uh, where the shortstop runs and flashes his glove if there's daylight between him and the uh, if there's daylight between the base runner and the base and he can get there, he's going to flash his glove, you're going to go. <clears throat> the number two one is going to be a timing play, which is very similar to a daylight, except it's on a pre-planned cadence, whether it be from a catcher's glove drop or on a set number of, uh, on a time uh, with a shortstop. And these are, let's just, we're going to assume for right now, this is a right-hand pitcher and uh, a shortstop running the play, so that we're um, going to use those three. Uh, so daylight, timing play, and then the last one's gonna be an inside spin move, uh, the leg lift move, right, uh, up and over. So let's start with daylight. Um, one of the things that I like to preach about the daylight play is if you're the shortstop, we need to know a little bit <clears throat> about when you're going to uh, run this play, okay? So if you just run out of the blue, it makes it really hard for me as a pitcher to know, are you breaking, are you not, are you creeping, are you not? And the more I can have an understanding and idea of what you're gonna do, then I'm not caught off guard, I don't balk, I also don't leave you out of position. And maybe I should back up and say, if you're doing, uh, if, if you're gonna be a pitcher, you cannot ever leave your, your shortstop hanging. Number one thing is if he breaks, you either throw, you step off, or you let him get reset. I generally would always prefer either a throw or a step off, just so you don't hold there, hold there, hold there, let him get back. I think it's just easier to step off and reset the play. And then, you know, sometimes it happens. You, he breaks, the guy gets back, or if he breaks and you weren't comfortable, uh, don't throw. But how do we make sure that you and your shortstop are on the same page, okay? I don't like encouraging, hey, pick, I'm gonna run a daylight play right here. How do you know what that base runner's gonna do? How do you know, if you're doing that, the guy's, the guy's on his base, the, second, uh, the, the base runner's on second base, and the shortstop says, hey, pick, hey, let's go ahead and do a pick, okay? How do you know where that base runner is going to be? Maybe he takes a shorter primary, so then the pick's still on, but he's so close to the base. Why are we doing that? One of the fundamentals, I think a huge fundamental at picking off at second base is understanding which type of picks work on which type of leads, when to do them. And I'll get into that maybe in a, in a next video, um, maybe at the end of this one. But let's just go back to daylight and how do you uh, exercise it here um, when it applies. Okay, and then I'll just use this bucket as my base runner. Okay, so let's pretend that me with the glove is the shortstop, okay? This bucket is our base runner, okay? Now I'm the shortstop playing in the deep six hole back here, okay? If I'm back here and you're the pitcher, I don't want the shortstop running now that I see daylight in between uh, the base runner and second base because when that, when that shortstop's way back here, I don't think that he's gonna even pick off, okay? So what I like to do is use some nonverbal communication between the shortstop and the pitcher based on hip position, okay? So from this camera angle and that, and that bucket being the base runner, if you see the shortstop's hips, one or both, on the third base side, on the outside of the base runner, the bucket, you are not picking, okay? That tells the pitcher, hey, I'm staying good. I might do a little and then release, but I am not picking. I will not flash this glove. What I then like, so there's, there's the no-go. It's outside, third base side. Now, even, okay? Shortstop's hips are even with this base runner. This should immediately tell me as the pitcher, I'm thinking about daylight. I'm thinking about picking. I'm in a position where if I can beat this guy back to the bag, the element of a surprise on its own should allow us to pick this guy off, got it? Okay, now let's take it a step further. Outside, even, inside. Now oftentimes it's not fully inside because if we do this, that third base coach says, back, back, back one, right? Okay, but if we take, think about starting here and maybe creeping, if this guy is a, is a potential candidate, I'm starting the outside, I'm coming in, I'm telling the pitcher non-verbally, hey, I'm even, I'm thinking about picking right here, I might creep inside, creep inside, and now I'm slightly inside. I'm either, right, half a hip inside, or let's say I even get just slightly more inside. At this point, 
this inside hip position should be an absolute cue to the pitchers. Bro, I'm gonna pick here. Don't pitch, okay, get ready. And if you don't like it and you just hold the ball, I'll key off of your nonverbal and then I'll go back and release. But as soon as I get this inside position, and if I'm the shortstop and I can break, that's when I go and that's when we get this guy. So as a pitcher, you start seeing here, he may or may not. Uh, I would give the shortstop the authority to break from this, this even, but I would much rather see a shortstop break from inside. That way the pitcher knows that you're gonna break. What I would recommend, shortstops, to help us out. If you're outside, we know you're outside. If you're even, if you're even here and you're trying to keep that guy, that, that base runner staying there, as soon as you know, hey, let's not do it, I wanna see a break back, okay? Release. It could be a release back, it could be a release back into the six hole, excuse me, back to the six hole. Uh, the other thing I haven't really talked about is the depth behind the base runner. That does absolutely come into play. Uh, whether you're even but way back versus an inside way back, that doesn't really mean anything. You need to be, let's just say, three feet uh, you know, about arm's length away from that base runner for this to really apply. Uh, so let's go back to it. Outside, even, inside, and break. Same thing. Now let's pretend, let's go to that example. Let's say I'm even or even a half inside and the pitcher's staring at me, staring at me, and the shortstop doesn't go. I don't want the shortstop inside unless we've talked about uh, defensive alignment positions. We're going to assume a neutral um, standard defensive position, not playing up the middle. But if this guy is inside, as a pitcher, I'd rather have you inside and then maybe release and show me you're not picking rather than just standing here. Because if you're standing here, I'm getting ready for you to break at any moment, okay? Lastly, shortstops, pitchers. These are the things, and this is a pitching video, maybe as much as it is for shortstops. Shortstops, I don't wanna see you do this. If As soon as I see your palm or your glove, you bust your ass to the base, okay? If I see open glove, you are booking. Okay, it's no, hey, get ready, I'm gonna go. No, it's non-verbally, I'm telling you, I'm coming from the outside to the even, bro, creeping, I'm going, okay? It should be that fast and you guys should be on the same page. Now, here's the next step. Where does the base runner come into play? <clears throat> this bucket's been standing still. This bucket's been an easy base runner to pick off because then I can just change. Well, guess what? Let's pretend I'm the shortstop and I start out Hell, let's just say I'm starting off here as a base runner. This guy, this bucket, or excuse me, I'm the shortstop. This bucket starts at his primary here, and he's on the outside. Well, guess what? He creeps off. Now he's even. I haven't moved. Okay, now he's even. Now he could potentially run it. Let's say he continues to creep off because he keeps moving. I, as a shortstop, I haven't moved. That base runner who kept moving and moving all of a sudden put himself in a position where now I'm on the inside. And now my nonverbal position is telling the pitcher, bro, we could pick this guy off. Let's go get this free out. So it's not just the shortstop moving that can uh, change the orientation and the spatial um, uh, positioning of the shortstop and the base runner to nonverbally tell the pitcher I'm gonna pick. It can be the base runner's movement extending that can say whether a play might be on or is on. Conversely, I might come in as a shortstop, I might come in even, back back, maybe I don't do anything, and maybe that third base coach says, hey, back one, and that guy's here. If I get to this, say, so I didn't move, and now he's on the inside, we're not picking. Okay, let the movement of the base runner and the movement of the shortstop, but their spatial alignment be the thing that dictates whether or not a play is not on on the outside, potentially on even, or likely on inside. I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's the daylight play. I'm gonna end it there for now. I'll get to the timing play and the inside spin move in another video, uh, but I love the daylight. I don't think you really need too much more than, than that move. I love the inside spin move. I do think the timing play has its place, um, especially in the youth game, uh, but I love the daylight play, and if you could master one play, pickoff play, I would master the daylight. Now, I'm, again, I'm really partial to the up and over, and I'll get into that in the next video. Uh, so thanks for joining. Uh, take a look down below. I'll try to put links to these other, uh, other types of moves, controlling the run game, etc. And if you have any other suggestions, uh, thoughts, comments, 
uh, please leave it below. Thanks, guys.